All right, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Ron. Thought I would share with you just a few facts about Remote ID, and I'm gonna keep this short and simple and to the point. So I'm gonna hit you with my top 10 facts that you'll wanna know about Remote ID. Number one, you wanna know the information in this video is specific to the United States. So if you live outside of the US, these rules do not apply to you. However, most other countries have historically followed suit with the guidelines set by the FAA in the United States, so just keep that in mind. Second thing that you wanna know is the FAA does not view your drone as a toy, it views your drone as an aircraft, and you're the aircraft's pilot. So again, not a toy. And let's be honest, many drones out there today do feel like toys, but we're talking about how the FAA sees them, so keep that in mind, especially with the holidays right around the corner. Third thing you wanna know, you as a drone pilot do not need to comply with remote ID until September 16th, 2023, next year. Now, nothing for you to do as a consumer today, but some important things to know in this video, so keep watching. Okay, number four. Drone manufacturers, companies like DJI, Skydio, Altel, and others have their own remote ID compliance dates, totally separate from consumer compliance dates. That date for drone manufacturers and specifically FAA enforcement is actually today, December 16th of 2022, the date which I'm actually uploading this video. And I'm gonna put some source information in the links down below if you want more information. I will also mention that it's at the FAA's discretion to take enforcement action on drone manufacturers. Again, only drone manufacturers need to worry about enforcement at this time. Fifth thing that you wanna know, and maybe I should have said and sort of started with this first, what is remote ID? Remote ID is the ability for a drone to provide identification and location information that can be received by other parties, third parties. And that will either be by a software feature or piece of hardware within the drone itself. Now, at which point things like a unique identifier, uh, the aircraft's altitude, the speed of your aircraft, timestamp data, and location of the pilot or the takeoff point will be broadcast. And FAA is calling this a remote ID serial number or a session ID. Number six, personal information like your name, address, phone number, or drone registration number will not, not be broadcast. Seventh thing you wanna know, why is the FAA doing this? In short, it's a phased approach to get ready for things like UTM, un uh, unmanned traffic management, and uh, beyond visual line of sight, or B BVLOS. Okay, and number eight, if you ever have any questions, you can always reach out to the FAA via email or phone call, and I'm gonna put, again, links down below. And I can tell you that I've reached out to them on more than one occasion, and they've always been very responsive and helpful to answering any questions that I had. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to call that number. I'm gonna put it up here somewhere on the screen, or just shoot them an email. Again, the link's down below. Number nine, at this point, the FAA is more interested in education and educating the public regarding remote ID from everything I've seen, heard, and read. They have little to no interest in prosecuting people or dragging matters through the courts. However, that being said, if you do something stupid, like flying your drone down the Las Vegas Strip and the drone actually ends up on a runway of outgoing aircraft, don't be surprised if you end up paying a huge fine. <laughs> Again, everything that I've seen indicates the FAA is looking to educate first, not litigate. And number 10, the FAA does have a website where you can see which drone manufacturers and drones are remote ID compliant. That site's called the UAS Declaration of Compliance, and I'm gonna put a screenshot up here somewhere. Uh, in this example, you can see that the DJI Avada drone has been updated to their list, even though you're not forced to update to the Avada's newest firmware, which actually gives that drone the remote ID feature. And if you don't own the Avada drone, don't worry about it. Plenty of other videos out there explaining what I'm actually talking about. And this is the DJI Avada drone. Now I know remote ID is a hot topic and can get a bit confusing. I also know there's a lot of opinions out there on this topic as well, some heated opinions. And there's always new information and important dates to remember, which is in part why I put this video together. And as we have new people joining the hobby daily, I thought it would take a minute and just highlight, again, 10 key points surrounding remote ID and maybe make it a little less confusing. 
feel free to comment down below on the topic. Just keep things respectful. Again, I know it can be a bit heated. And with that being said, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get another video up before the holidays. So if I don't, I hope everyone has a great holiday season with the friends and family. And that's it for this video. I wanted to keep it short and to the point. Take care. We'll see you in the next video.